There are vast, unseen, and unrecognized realms of existence in the universe. We see only a small slice of everything that exists, just the tip of the iceberg. The energetic field that we are immersed in is a field of existence that contains a multitude of realities. Conventional science's understanding of reality is very one-dimensional. It essentially assumes that reality consists only of that which we can see and touch, and it implicitly assumes that it is a singular reality, that the reality that we perceive and participate in is the one and only reality. They've ruled out, or maybe more accurately, haven't conceived of, the possibility of unseen realms and other or parallel realities. Nevertheless, a very interesting discovery happened recently. With the help of mathematical methods of algebraic topology, scientists have found structures and multidimensional geometric spaces in the human brain networks. A new study has demonstrated that the human brain contains structures and shapes that may have up to 11 dimensions. Experts have previously stated how human brains are estimated to contain a staggering 86 billion neurons including several connections from each cell, expanding and connecting in every possible direction, producing a super-vast cellular network, which is believed to be the reason for our brains being capable of receiving consciousness and connecting to the universal knowledge. An international team of researchers gathered around the Blue Brain Project has obtained results that have never before been observed in the world of neuroscience. This team managed to find structures in the brain that present a multidimensional universe, uncovering the first geometric design of neural connections and how they respond to stimuli. The researchers utilized in-depth computer modeling methods in order to understand how human brain cells can adapt themselves in order to carry out extremely complex tasks. Scientists made use of mathematical models of algebraic topology in order to describe different structures and multidimensional geometric spaces in the human brain networks. In the study, the scientists note how structures are formed at the same time that they are interlaced in a unity that creates a precise geometric structure. Henry Markram, a neuroscientist and the director of the Blue Brain Project in Lausanne, Switzerland, made the following statement. We have found a world that we had never imagined before. We've uncovered tens of millions of these objects, even in a small speck of the brain, up through seven dimensions. However, in some networks, we even discovered structures with up to 11 dimensions. As explained by scientists, every single neuron within our brain can interconnect to an adjacent one in a particular way, in order to form an object with intricate connections. Interestingly, the more neurons join in with the click, the more dimensions that are joined to the object. With the advance of science, experts were able to model the structure within a virtual brain, produced with the aid of computers. Later, experts carried out tests on real brain tissue to verify the results. After the researchers included stimulus into the virtual brain tissue, they found that clicks of progressively higher dimensions compiled. They discovered that in between these clicks were empty spaces like holes or cavities, just like the empty spaces we found in the universe. The scientists discovered amazing hidden patterns of brain activity never seen before. Rand Levi from Aberdeen University, who worked on the paper, made the following statement. The presence of high-dimensional cavities when the brain is processing information indicates that the neurons in the network respond to stimuli in a remarkably organized manner. It is as if the brain responds to an inducement by constructing then smashing a tower of multidimensional blocks, starting with rods 1D, planks 2D, cubes 3D, and then more complex geometries with 4D, 5D, etc. The sequence of activity throughout the brain resembles a multidimensional sandcastle that has the ability to materialize out of the sand and then disintegrate. Furthermore, experts note that while shapes that are three-dimensional in nature have height, width, and depth, the objects uncovered by experts in the study don't exist in more than three dimensions in our reality. However, the mathematics used to define them, 
may contain as many as five, six, seven, and up to eleven dimensions. Professor C. van Loon from KU Leuven, Belgium, said in an interview, Outside of physics, high-dimensional spaces are commonly used to represent complex data structures or conditions of systems. For example, the state of a dynamical system in state space. The space is simply the combination of all the degrees of freedom the system has, and its state represents the values these degrees of freedom are actually assuming. This astonishing discovery confirms the incredible ancient belief which dates back to the earliest civilization. The belief that we are not just a physical being, living in a physical universe, but that we are multidimensional beings living in a multidimensional universe. Many ancient spiritual and metaphysical philosophies, like Buddhism, Vedism, Hinduism, Kabbalism, and many others, believe that there were multiple realms of existence within the universe. They believe that the universe was somehow divided into planes, each comprising its own reality, populated and inhabited by multitudes of entities beings, creatures, and objects. The hidden dimensions are unseen realms and make up a much larger proportion of the universe than the physical parts which are visible to us. Physicists know this and call the unseen parts dark matter and dark energy. Conventional science has not yet theorized a plan of these higher dimensions, so we must look to ancient knowledge and alternative science for the answers. The following passage from the ancient Hindu text, the Vishnu Purana, states much the same thing. This universe, composed of seven zones, is everywhere swarming with living creatures, large or small, so that there is not the eighth part of an inch in which they do not abound. Eastern spiritual science describes seven planes. The lower planes express more of the matter aspect and are therefore more material and the higher planes express more of the energy aspect and are therefore more subtle. The seven planes are not specific locations. They all interpenetrate each other and occupy the same space. Different levels of consciousness are required to perceive the different planes or dimensions. The Kabbalah has its own system of cosmology called the Tree of Life. It has ten sephiroth or worlds, which correspond exactly with the seven planes of the Eastern systems. In the Emerald Tablets of Thoth, in Tablet 10, called The Key of Time, we found the following passage. List ye, O man, and hear a mystery, stranger than all that lies neath the sun. Know ye, O man, that all space is filled by worlds within worlds. I, one within the other, yet separate by law. The ancients knew, intuitively, that the universe had many invisible parallel realities, but they lacked a science to explain how this was possible. This is no longer the case, and there is nothing at all mystical about it. It's just physics, the physics of energy and frequency. It has been written about before, over and over again, but cannot be emphasized enough. The world of quantum physics is an eerie one, one that sheds light on the truth about our world in ways that challenge the existing framework of accepted knowledge. What we perceive as our physical material world is really not physical or material at all. In fact, it is far from it. This has been proven time and time again by multiple Nobel Prize winning physicists among many other scientists around the world. One of them was Niels Bohr a Danish physicist who made significant contributions to understanding atomic structure and quantum theory, for which he received the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1922. According to Bohr, if quantum mechanics hasn't profoundly shocked you, you haven't understood it yet. Everything we call real is made of things that cannot be regarded as real. At the turn of the 19th century, physicists started to explore the relationship between energy and the structure of matter. In doing so, the belief that a physical Newtonian material universe that was at the very heart of scientific knowing was dropped, and the realization that matter is nothing but an illusion replaced it. Scientists began to recognize that everything in the universe is made out of pure energy. 
The great genius Nikola Tesla also knew that, and he is quoted saying, If you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. Quantum physicists have already discovered that the physical atoms are made up of non-physical vortices of energy that are constantly spinning and vibrating, each one radiating its own unique energy signature. Therefore, if we really want to observe ourselves and find out what we are, we would discover that we are really beings of energy and vibration, radiating our own unique energy signature and frequency. This is fact and is what quantum physics has shown us time and time again. We are much more than what we perceive ourselves to be, and it's time we begin to see ourselves in that light. If you observed the composition of an atom with a microscope, you would see a small, invisible, tornado-like vortex with a number of infinitely small energy vortices called quarks and photons. These are what make up the structure of the atom. As you focused in closer and closer on the structure of the atom, you would see nothing. You would observe a physical void. The atom has no physical structure. We have no physical structure. Physical things really don't have anything physical in them. Atoms are made out of invisible energy, not tangible matter. As Richard Kahn Henry, a professor of physics and astronomy, stated, Get over it and accept the inarguable conclusion. The universe is immaterial, mental and spiritual. Our experience tells us that our reality is made up of physical material things and that our world is an independently existing objective one. The revelation that the universe is not an assembly of physical parts and instead comes from a holistic entanglement of immaterial energy waves stems from the work of Albert Einstein, Max Planck, and Werner Heisenberg, among many others. But what does it mean that our physical material reality isn't really physical at all? It could mean a number of things, and concepts such as this cannot be explored if scientists remain within the boundaries of the only perceived world existing, the world we see. As Nikola Tesla said, the day science begins to study non-physical phenomena, it will make more progress in one decade than in all the previous centuries of its existence. Fortunately, many scientists have already taken the leap and have already questioned the meaning and implications of what we've discovered with quantum physics. One of these potential revelations is that the observer creates the reality. A fundamental conclusion of the new physics also acknowledges that the observer creates the reality. As observers, we are personally involved with the creation of our own reality. Physicists are being forced to admit that the universe is a mental construction. Pioneering physicist Sir James Jeans wrote, The stream of knowledge is heading toward a non-mechanical reality. The universe begins to look more like a great thought than like a great machine. Mind no longer appears to be an accidental intruder into the realm of matter. We ought rather hail it as the creator and governor of the realm of matter. One great example that illustrates the role of consciousness within the physical material world which we know not to be so physical, is the double-slit experiment. This experiment has been used multiple times to explore the role of consciousness in shaping the nature of our physical reality. A double-slit optical system was used to test the possible role of consciousness in the collapse of the quantum wave function. The ratio of the interference pattern's double-slit spectral power to its single-slit spectral power was predicted to decrease when attention was focused toward the double slit as compared to away from it. The study found that factors associated with consciousness, such as meditation, experience, electrocortical markers of focused attention, and psychological factors such as openness and absorption, significantly correlated in predicted ways with perturbations in the double slit interference pattern. If this doesn't make much sense to you, Here's a five-minute video which explains the double-slit experiment in a very simple way. Once you watch the whole thing, your perspective of our reality will completely change. And here we are, the granddaddy of all quantum weirdness, the infamous double-slit experiment. To understand this experiment, we first need to see how particles, or little balls of matter, act. 
If we randomly shoot a small object, say a marble, at the screen, we see a pattern on the back wall where they went through the slit and hit. Now, if we add a second slit, we would expect to see a second band duplicated to the right. Now, let's look at waves. The waves hit the slit and radiate out, striking the back wall with the most intensity directly in line with the slit. The line of brightness on the back screen shows that intensity. This is similar to the line the marbles make. But when we add the second slit, something different happens. If the top of one wave meets the bottom of another wave, they cancel each other out. So now there is an interference pattern on the back wall. Places where the two tops meet are the highest intensity, the bright lines, and where they cancel, there is nothing. So, when we throw things, that is, matter, through two slits, we get this, two bands of hits. And with waves, we get an interference pattern of many bands. Good so far. Now, let's go quantum. <laughs> An electron is a tiny, tiny bit of matter, like a tiny marble. Let's fire a stream through one slit. It behaves just like the marble, a single band. So, if we shoot these tiny bits through two slits, we should get, like the marbles, two bands. What? An interference pattern. We fired electrons, tiny bits of matter, through. We get a pattern like waves, not like little marbles. How? How could pieces of matter create an interference pattern like a wave? It doesn't make sense. But physicists are clever. They thought, maybe those little balls are bouncing off each other and creating that pattern. So. They decide to shoot electrons through one at a time. There is no way they could interfere with each other. But after an hour of this, the same interference pattern is seen to emerge. The conclusion is inescapable. The single electron leaves as a particle, becomes a wave of potentials, goes through both slits, and interferes with itself to hit the wall like a particle. But mathematically, it's even stranger. It goes through both slits, and it goes through neither. And it goes through just one, and it goes through just the other. All of these possibilities are in superposition with each other. But physicists were completely baffled by this. So they decided to peek and see which slit it actually goes through. They put a measuring device by one slit to see which one it went through and let it fly. <laughs> but the quantum world is far more mysterious than they could have imagined. When they observed, the electron went back to behaving like a little marble. It produced a pattern of two bands, not an interference pattern of many. The very act of measuring or observing which slit it went through meant it only went through one, not both. The electron decided to act differently, as though it was aware it was being watched. As shocking as it is, the double slit experiment is the proof that we create our own reality and that the universe is mental. The significance of this information is for us to wake up and realize that we are all energy, radiating our own unique energy signature. We function in many different versions of reality at once. Though we appear to be conscious only here, there are also alternative forms of there, in which we experience in bodies that are every bit as real as this one. The universe is like a hologram, with each level reflecting all other levels. The universe is coherent. 
Nothing stands alone. Everything is connected to everything. Change one thing and you change everything. Resonance and frequency are the keys to the universe. We exist in a reality created by energetic vibration. As we study metaphysics, we come to understand the multidimensional nature of our soul's experience. Every person is his or her own universe, fragmented into every possible manifestation in order to explore that which called you into existence at this level of vibration. As we become more aware, we can connect with other aspects of our own soul existing in parallel programs of reality or parallel universes, which exist in different frequency vibrations. Each of our infinite fragments is insulated, separated by a veil of forgetfulness that allows each component part of that scenario to assume a point of view and provide a unique perspective of what is transpiring within that now moment. Your senses are not windows to an objective universe. They are really filters, blocking from your awareness what you have no desire to see. Out there consists of an endless array of everything imaginable. But here, in this 3D universe, you have assigned for yourself a specific focus, and your veil makes sure that you stay with it until that focus is complete. Here's an example. When you enter into a sleep state, you experience a parallel or multidimensional life. It is real, continual, and meaningful. You might think of it as a past or future life. You may experience profound relationships with others, remember well-traveled paths and places that are not consciously known to you in your current reality program. Some have experienced being absolutely heartbroken over someone deeply familiar in a dream only to awaken and wonder why they would feel such things for someone not in their current state of consciousness. You feel pain, pleasure, and everything else. What you are experiencing is yourself in a parallel or multidimensional reality. Your current reality channel has just temporarily changed frequency. They are all equally real and playing simultaneously. Feelings, thoughts, and emotions play a vital role. Quantum physics helps us to see the significance of how we all feel. If all of us are in a peaceful, loving state inside, it will no doubt impact the external world around us and influence how others feel as well. Studies have shown that positive emotions and operating from a place of peace within oneself can lead to a very different experience for the person emitting those emotions and for those around them. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button, and if you're new, hit subscribe and the bell next to it for future notifications.